So we'll wrap up chapter 26 with a little mini lecture on biopolymers, again quite short, but let me tell you that there will be a couple other uh, mini lectures, if you will, going on some, doing some review of the earlier chapters in the year. So stay tuned and I'll keep you posted so that you can have something else to look at just because, you know, you can't miss any more mini lectures or something like that. Okay, so what can we say about biopolymers? Well, I say Mother Nature is a lot better than us at making polymers. You string together a whole bunch of amino acids, and you've got a protein, you polymerize carbohydrates, sugars, and you've got a polysaccharide, you string together nucleic acids, and you got you and me, RNA and DNA. Pretty impressive. And these are huge, huge molecules. Yet again, molar mass is in the millions. So we've already seen some um, polymerized amino acids in the forms of proteins and, and enzymes. That's a polypeptide, and as I, you can see from the highlighted amide leakages, there, polyamides. Here is a beautiful example of one that certainly illustrates just how incredibly large these molecules are. This is a prostaglandin synthase and it is an example of a an enzyme slash protein that if you I don't know if you guys cover this in cell bio but it's definitely covered in um, molecular and biochemistry that there are many aspects to the structure of these molecules. The primary structure is the kind of structure that we're used to talking about in OCHEM. Covalent bonds. What kind of bonds are holding, holding this glob of electron density together? But in addition, there are the secondary forces that pull the long, 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 long primary chain into itself so that it globs together as shown. So these kinds of um, structures are held together by intermolecular forces and show up as the alpha helices or beta pleated sheets and I'll show you an example in just a sec. Um, there's a tertiary structure that goes even beyond the intermolecular forces and finally, a quaternary structure when different subunits pull together of these things. So I can illustrate this much more um, accurately, attractively, by going to the protein data bank that shows this molecule. So here is the same molecule, polymer, biopolymer, shown as a cartoon and what you can see is there's a lot of stuff in here. So what we're just showing here, let me scroll down a little bit, Ooh, my computer's a little slow today. So look <laughs> this is just the substrate for this molecule. Look at all these other things. That's the secondary structure shown as a cartoon. So if we actually go in and show the ball and stick, that gives you a lot better idea of just how many atoms there are in this crazy molecule. All right, so it's huge. It has a well-defined and specific shape, and because of that well-defined and specific shape and the intermolecular attractions in specific areas, like right there, your substrates will fit in and chemistry will take place that's very effective in a biological system. So enzymes, polypeptides, amazing, amazing molecules. Polysaccharides, well, hmm, got a lot of those running around in us too. This will take us back to review ketals, acetals and ketals, 
remember that hemi acetals are the ones that have the OH, the OH, ha, hemi. Um, that's a hemi acetal right there. And that that is a very unstable molecule unless it's a five or six membered ring because it just wants to pop back open and be the straight straight chain guy. So if that intramolecular reaction can take place, one, two, three, four, five, six, it will act as a fairly stable cyclic hemiacetal. Note that any, again this review, any carbon that has two oxygens attached that's your anomeric carbon. And the particular polysaccharide that I show on the bottom here is cellulose. Okay, so you can see one sugar, two sugar, three sugar, and so on and so forth. So polysaccharides are strung together by many units of sugar molecules, but they all have anomeric carbons. Stereochemistry as well. Stereochemistry plays a vital role in terms of how these molecules behave. Starch and cellulose are both actually made up of the same exact sugar units. It's a, a polymer of glucose. But at starch, the linkage is as shown, making a kind of a really obvious bend in the molecule. It's called an alpha linkage, whereas in cellulose, shown, shown down below, the linkage has the different stereochemistry. We, we learned about this back when we did the uh, synthesis of bioethanol in OCHEM 1 lab. Because of that rigidity, um, that planar or linear nature of cellulose here down below, we have lots and lots of um, intermolecular forces that make it extremely difficult to hydrolyze. Whereas cellulose being bent like this, easy for us humanoids to digest starch, but we don't do so good with cellulose. So the stereochemistry makes all the difference in terms of the physical properties of these particular uh, polysaccharides. Okay, the last biopolymer we're going to look at is me and you, you know, RNA and DNA. So monomers, basically we have three monomers, the nucleic acids, guanine, thymine, adenine, and cytosine, those are our nucleic acids, plus either deoxyribose or ribose itself, So whether or not this guy is present is deoxy or non-deoxy, just plain old ribose. And then the third monomer is a phosphate. Okay, you string those three together, and what do you have? You have RNA or DNA, depending upon whether or not that other oxygen hydroxy group is there. So basically, polymer chain goes on and on. If you've had cell biology, if you've had any biology, you know the structure of RNA and DNA, but again, it's a biopolymer. So made up of your purine or pyrimidine bases, your, let's do some color here, your ribose, or in this case deoxyribose um, sugar, and then the phosphate ester linker between the riboses. So a very uh, highly recommended, in terms of, in my opinion, reading for those of you who are interested in biochemistry and organic chemistry is this science article. It may look a little old, but it's very, um, very good reading. Why nature uses phosphates as leaving groups and 
uh, linkers as opposed to the things that chemists use like sulfonates, tosylates, etc. It's pretty cool stuff. So that rounds up all of the OCHEM that we're going to learn this year, which is a lot. But I would be terribly remiss to not have a joke. And so my joke pokes fun at doctors. Oh dear. Well, doctors and patients, really. The doctor says to this patient who's been visiting with him, he says, the doctor says, you know, you're in perfect health. You will live to be at least 65. And the patient says, but I already am 65. And the doctor says, see, what did I tell you? <laughs> so may you be as sure of yourself uh, in finishing up your organic chemistry career in 2302 as that doctor is in his predictions. And we will see you in class. But again, stay tuned for a couple more review type mini lectures.